Cassio Cannon here from Fiction Atlas Press bring you another Indie Connection. Today I'm going to be telling you about some indie books that you might enjoy if you are a fan of Sabah Tahir's An Ember in the Ashes. This is one of my favorite series and I'm really excited to bring you some indie books that are a lot like this one. So here they are. The first book I have for you is called Rise by J.M. Curl. Magic is outlawed. The penalty is death. Can one girl's quest to save her father start a rebellion? Daylin's life on the farm has been simple, but she knows her magic-born mother keeps secrets. What is she hiding? Why do strange men speaking the enemy kingdom's language show up at their door? What do they want? Daylin hasn't prepared for what's to come. She'll need to learn to fight, deceive, and embrace her inner warrior. It's in her blood. Her parents were never farmers. They're highly trained spies. And to save her father from the gallows, she'll need to become one too. Can she beguile the enemy prince and his house to set her father and possibly even magic free? The next book I have for you is called Relic by Bronwyn Ellie. A fatal job, a deadly jewel. How long will Caitlin survive? Snatched from her life as a blacksmith, Caitlin Rove is forced to become the shadow a personal servant of a ruthless and powerful lord. But Lord Renard himself isn't the threat. It's the relic he wears around his neck, a stone that protects his bloodline but poisons everyone else in its proximity. Kaelin's life becomes a waking nightmare as the relic slowly destroys her body and mind. But just as hope begins to fade, she discovers a rebel plot that might put an end to Renard's rule. The third book I have for you is called A Dagger in the Winds by Brendan Noble. An outcast cursed since birth, a witch chosen by a goddess. Torn apart by fate, together can they save their tribe from eternal winter? All a claw has ever dreamed of is belonging and purpose. Except he's never actually dreamed. Each night his soul leaves his body, allowing him to wander invisibly until he wakes. He'd do anything to know why. Even give a blood offering to the goddess of winter and death. As a priestess of spring, there's no one Auntie Lita hates more than the winter goddess, except maybe her once best friend, Wakal. It's been four years since she saved his life using forbidden magic. Her thanks? Abandonment. Winter stole her mother just weeks later, and Wakal never came. But when Alita discovers Wakal bearing the winter goddess's mark on what should be the first day of spring, she realizes the horrific truth. Winter will not end, and Wakal is her only hope of discovering why. And the last book I have for you is called All That We See or Seem by Christina Marr. Every night, 17-year-old Reeve Lennox finds herself under a noose. By day, she is a lady of Arcasade's royal house, daydreaming of adventure and love. But every night in sleep, she wanders through a nightmare city, an invisible witness to the screeches of monsters and the screams of their victims. Her only consolation is Bran, a battle-torn young man with a selfless heart and eyes that reflect the stars. Yet while Reeve falls deeper into her dream, in truth she is engaged to Arden, a mercurial nobleman who has long been cured of his belief in love and breathes fire and flattery like other people breathe air. Torn between two lives, Reeve struggles to remember what's real, until night and day collide with a revelation that threatens all of Arcasad. Okay, that's all for me this week. I'll see you next week on the Connection. Bye.